Hello everyone, today I'm going to be showing you how to create this brick wall that you can make into any shape you want, as well as remove the bricks randomly and be able to control it all from the blueprint so you can specify exactly how many bricks you want to keep in the setup. Let's get into it. So here we are in a brand new clean world as always. So I just downloaded some concrete bricks for us to use for this demo from Megascans as you see. But before we do that, we of course need to go under edit, plugins, search procedural, and you wanna turn on procedural content generation network. And this is another one I recommend turning on because it adds a few nice new options for PCG. Turn them both on and restart your engine. Once you've gone ahead and enabled everything, search up PCG. And we're gonna make a PCG graph and I'm just gonna call it PCG brick wall. And I'm gonna make a new blueprint actor and this is gonna be BP brick wall, open it up. And in here, I'm gonna add a scene component to get rid of the icon, replace the default root. I'm gonna add a spline. And right away, I'm gonna make it a little bit easier on me. I'm gonna right click on it. And then I'm gonna say spline generation panel. And I'm gonna generate a square length, let's say 200. And actually, because it is generating from the last point there, I'm gonna close out of here, undo it and remove that point the extra one out there, then right click spline generation square. And now it's generating from the center. I'll say 200 as the default. So that way we have something to start with. So we close out of here. So now we have our square. Uh, the next thing I wanna do is rotate the entire thing upwards. So it's standing upright. And the other thing I need to do is search under spline. I need to make sure it's a closed loop. Now, of course, here we have a, a little bit of a, uh, curve and the easy solution to that is I'm going to do spline point type instead of curve linear and there we go now it's perfect square and we can adjust this of course down the line so let's go ahead and add a pcg to our outliner here and let's go ahead and plug in the pcg brick wall that we have generated plug this in compile save and we're pretty much done with this so we can go ahead and drag it out and immediately you see we have well, we don't really have anything because we haven't set up anything, but our curve is in here. And if we want to, we can already start modifying it as we want. So let's go ahead and open up our PCG graph, get our spline data. And this is going to get the data from the blueprint we just created. And then we're going to get a spline sampler. So if I just go ahead and press D to debug this so we can see the points. You can see it's on the actual spline itself, but we don't want that. We want to change it from on spline to on interior. Immediately you can see these are very large points. So let's go ahead and change the border, interior border samples. So we can change it to like 50 and then you can see they're a bit further spread out and we can actually make this a lot larger now. Set this up as a large wall. You can see as we're dragging this out, we can effectively make a big grid of this and this is gonna be the basis of our brick wall. But of course we don't want just points. For demonstration, let's go ahead and set up a static mesh spawner and let's plug in one of the bricks we have in here and see how it looks. And for myself, I'll go ahead and plug in all the variations. So immediately I'm gonna have four variations of bricks to work with. There we go, they're all plugged in. I can stop sampling this. And you can see, well, they're very far apart. They're very far apart and they're, they're quite small for this. So we need to change the samples that we're doing on the spline to accommodate this. So to adjust the spacing between everything is actually quite simple. You just go under spline sampler and we need to change the interior sample rate. So if I, for example, put this at 50, you can see we'd have double the bricks. 40, 30, 20. 20 is pretty much where we'd want, right? We kind of want maybe a little, a little bit higher, lower gaps. If I do 18, the gaps disappear entirely. 19, same thing. So 20 is where I'm gonna have this. But of course, you see that because of the way the bricks are, they're not square and the points are all square. So we have a gap here. So we need to actually have another layer down here where the bricks are offset. And to do that, we're going to go ahead and just go transform points move this over to the side and I'm going to offset the position of these bricks, plug this in right in here. So we effectively are spawning it twice, but we were not offsetting anything yet. So 
they're on top of each other. So we're gonna offset the Z by set offset like by 10. Actually, in this case, it is offsetting forward because we rotated this. So the value that we need to change is Y. So if I change 10 and 10, you can see now they have offset vertically. Now they're exactly the same ones, perfectly. It's doubled. So I'm gonna duplicate the static mesh spawner and instead of having it plugged in to the same one, I'm gonna have it plugged into this one and on this one, I'm gonna change the seed of it. So now you can see it has now randomized it but of course we still need to offset it. So let's go ahead and offset it. So in our case, Y is up, X is side to side, Z is forward and back. So I'm gonna offset it by let's say 10 and 10. And you can see now we have an offset brick wall with variations of different kinds of bricks. And this might be kind of enough for what you're looking for, but we wanna go a step further. Occasionally you might have some bricks that kind of fallen off. So let's go ahead and uh, remove some of these bricks randomly. So to do that is very simple. Out of the spline sampler and out of transform points, we're gonna go ahead and search for density noise. I'm gonna unplug this first static mesh spawner. And in here, we're gonna search for density filter. So we're gonna plug this in. And by default, you can see already, you have a bunch of points missing. But of course, we wanna be able to control this. So let's go ahead and open up our blueprint. And in our blueprint, we're gonna add a variable and we're gonna call it brick percent. And we're gonna change it to a float. And I'm just gonna go ahead and copy this, the entire name, compile and save. And in here, under density filter, open it up and we're gonna change the lower bound to zero. So it keeps everything. And we're gonna adjust the upper bound. We're gonna search for get actor property. And for the property name is the variable name, brick percent and we're gonna plug into upper bound. And that, by default, everything disappeared because we have the default at zero. So we're gonna change that to one and we're gonna set the slider range between zero and one. And now if I select this and I go into my variables, assuming I actually take the time to properly expose this like I should. So now I can change, lower this, eight, one, as you can see, it is disappearing, but it's only disappearing from one of them, right? And we want to disappear from both. Now it's pretty simple. We just copy paste this down here, replug it in. And something you'll notice immediately when you do that is, well, now it's exactly mirrored, right? So in here in density noise, you want to change the seed. And now in this wall, we can now change how many bricks we want to keep, how much destruction you want. You can keep just a few, you can keep very many. So now, all we need to do is add a back piece to this. And for that, we'll just, in this case, I'll just grab a, a cube. I'll place this right behind it. And we can go ahead and just move it a little bit forward so it can even intersect. And I'm gonna grab myself a mega scans texture of some concrete to put behind it. So here we go, I grabbed a material. So now I can just drag it in. And just like that, we have a brick in front of a concrete wall, probably not the best texture to use, and it is stretched because we are just putting it on a cube, but you guys get the idea. Now you're able to have any kind of shape wall you want, full of created of bricks, and you can even alt drag to add more points. So you can create any shape you want from this. That is how to make a full wall procedurally with PCG. Hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, consider hitting the like button, subscribing, and I'll see you guys next time. Take care. Bye.